Now that you've seen how to create a long shadow using a blend, you can record those steps in an action, so you can create that same kind of shadow for any object in seconds. Let's see how that's done. I have my Actions panel open, and I've created a new set called Tuts Actions. I'm going to choose New Action from the Flyout menu, and just call it Long Shadow. I'll click the Record button, and Begin. I'll select the object, then go up to the Edit menu to Copy, go back up to the Edit menu, and Paste in Back. And you can see that those steps are being added in my Actions panel as I do them. Just as a precaution, I'm going to add a step to make a compound path. It's always good to work on a compound path, and you won't know what kind of shape you're starting with. So again, this is just a precaution that I'm going to add in by going to the Object menu to Compound Path Make. I'll go over to the Layers panel and choose Locate Object, and you can see that that discloses this layer and highlights that object. Now I'm going to go back to the Layers menu and enter Isolation Mode. I'll go up to the Select menu and select All, and you can see it's selected in the Layers menu. Then I'm going to change the color to black. I'll go back up to the Edit menu, Copy, and Paste in Back. Now that Back object is still selected, and I need to move it. But I can't just drag it manually, because that would defeat the purpose of the action. So we're going to use the Move command, which is underneath the Object menu, under the Transform submenu. When this dialog box pops up, you'll have to eyeball the distance, and it's about 200 points in each direction, which will constrain the angle to 45 degrees. I'll click OK, and then in my Actions panel, you can see that those values were entered, but these might not be the values that you're going to have every time. It's going to depend on the size of your original object. So we want this dialog box to pop up every time the action is run, so that the user can input those values manually. So I'm going to toggle the dialog on here in the Actions panel. And when I click in this space, I get a little menu icon. So that means the dialog box is going to pop up every time. Now I'm going to change the opacity of that object to 0%, go back up to the Select menu to Select All, and then go up to the Object menu to Blend Make. And here I'm going to go back up to the Object menu and open up the Blend settings. They might be set on something different every time you run the action, so you're going to want to double check. This one just has the settings I've already used previously, and those are what I want, so I'm going to click OK. And you can see this little icon in the Actions panel, meaning that that dialog is going to pop up every time. Now I'm going to go over to the Transparency panel, and choose the Blending Mode, which is Multiply, and reduce the overall opacity of the blend as well. I'll go back to the Layers menu to Exit Isolation Mode, and we're done. And I'll click this button to stop recording, and there's our long shadow. So let's see this action in action. There's a lot of steps, but it'll go by really quickly by simply pressing Play. So I'm going to select the icon and click the Play button. The Move dialog will pop up, so I can manually enter those values. It's just got the ones that I used before, so they're good. I'll click OK. Then the blend is made, and those blend options come up, and those are OK. And it's done. So this is a really fast way to create these long shadows, now that you've recorded all the steps in an action. If you have lots of icons that are roughly the same size, you can toggle off those dialog boxes, and batch process hundreds of files in minutes.